remember the fire alarm was went into the fire station to alert us that we had a fire alarm going off at the SL1. Okay, what, you've probably heard a lot of this, but let's talk a little. Now we're up to the SL1 incident. The, the, I came on duty the morning that this happened and talked about, this was January the 3rd, and talked about uh, uh, things that we're going to do during the day. About 9.15 that morning, uh, we got a fire alarm call from the SL1 reactor area. Well, no, it was about 10 o'clock. We got this fire alarm code 221, which you heard Mr. Rigby clang out. So we ran out there. When you get an alarm, yeah, we pick up a card in the alarm room, and it told you that this is alarm 221 at SL1, and it tells you it's the office and reactor complex. Now, that's all it tells you. Well, we had this, I made a little sign here. This is a radiation sign, of course. It's kind of crude, but anyway. Uh, it tells you that there might, be a problem somewhere in that complex with radiation. But it doesn't tell you where. And this code, 221, covered the whole building. It didn't just cover this room. It did not cover the next room or, or the next floor. It covered the whole building. So when you got that code, you drove out there and you made entry. Okay, there's the complex, and here is where the code came from, this area right here, okay? Now, it told you that's where it, the code is at, that's where the fire alarm is coming from, but you had to determine or find out what was going on. So, in this case, we drove out there, and let me see if I can... There's the guard house, and we drove out there, and we found that, that it was right in that area right there is where the fire alarm was coming from, which was the furnace room, and there was a little heat detector, like you see right up there. That's a sprinkler head, but we'll call that a heat detector for now. So that was up there blinking away. We finally found it blinking away. Hey, I'm the culprit. You look around, nothing wrong. There's nothing going on here. What, why are you doing this? And it didn't, it didn't tell. It can't talk. So we reset the fire alarm, and we returned back to fire station number one. Now, this is all on a nice cold day. And fire trucks in that era were the officer and the driver would sit up front in the cab, enjoying the heater and everything, and the firefighters was in the back, an open area, and when you're talking about 17 below zero that night, the firemen get a little chilly because you got a little run there for about 9, 10 miles to get there. So you're, okay. So anyway, we arrived out, out there, and we didn't find anything. About 2.30 in the afternoon, ding, 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 and it comes in again. So, you got to go. So, we drives out there, but this time we know right where it's going to be. Goes in the, in the gate there, as you see, and we goes around this way and goes into that uh, area there, and... Sure enough, open up the door and look in there, and there's that little fella in there saying, ha ha, I got you again. Blink, 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 blink. <laughs> now, we call up the alarm shop and say, hey, we can't keep doing this just for practice. It's cold out there. So, well, we'll fix it tomorrow. Have you heard that? We'll do it tomorrow. It's too late in the day. We'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> we reset the alarm again. It set fine. The little fella says, okay, I'm happy and reset it again. Then, we go back home. 
At 9.18 that night, 9.18, ding, 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 ding. There comes that you-know-what alarm in again. By now, we got a wolf-wolf attitude, of course. So we drive out the guardhouse. There's no guard on duty because back shift, there is, he's a roving patrolman now, and he, he isn't stationed in this guardhouse. This guardhouse, picture I took of this guardhouse was way years later. But he, he isn't there now. So, but he knew because when the alarm came in, the fire alarm dispatcher would broadcast over the radio system to uh, the security saying, we are responding to the SL-1 in this case. So that roving patrolman, wherever he was, would come back to the area to let us in. Well, he was a ways away, so we didn't get to, to see him for a few minutes. But we still needed to get in there. We knew without a shadow of a doubt, it was that ding, 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 that was that alarm in the furnace room. So we made entry through the portal monitor, uh, through the guardhouse, and I drew a little sketch here. And what you did was to get in there back shift is you picked up the phone and you called into the control room, and then one of the personnel would come out and, and unlock that door right there and let you in. We made this phone call here, right there, right there. We made that phone call there and no answer. What's going on here? So then, by the way, this right here, this portal monitor, was alarming like you wouldn't believe. But you can't hurt firemen, so we ignored it. We needed to get in and see where that alarm was coming from. All right. So we, when I got our master key and let us in there, and we proceeded to go around to the control room, or around to the furnace room, which was, I can got a better picture of it, it was right there. We went around to the furnace room, walked in the furnace room, that little guy up there says, it ain't me, it ain't me, I didn't do it. Now what do you do? So we got a, what's going on here? So we just, it isn't that alarm, it's got to be another alarm. Now, there was no remote, uh, no remote transmitter to transmit to anywhere else that said there was a nuclear problem here or a radiation problem, only in this plant. So nobody knew at that time, and we didn't know, other than that portal monitor was telling us, hey, there's a problem here, we didn't know that that was a problem. So we, that isn't the guy, so that room right there, I've, I've made a sketch of that. So we proceeded around, back around the building in this main entrance here. And we went in that main entrance looking for somebody coming down the hall uh, right here, and here's the control room and all of that. We're looking for somebody to tell us what's going on with a new where alarm was coming from or anything. And nobody was telling us a thing. Now, here again, we should have had enough sense that when we got to this point right here, there was a big, nice, big light there blinking, a red light that would say, high radiation, blink, 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 blink. Now that should have tipped us off. And again, <laughs> uh, there's a former fire chief here, and he's going to reach out one of these any moment now and get me. But here again, training, we didn't have the right training at the time. And we ignored that for a second or two and then the assistant chief says we better get back out and get us an instrument. <coughs> we goes back out to the fire truck and we gets us an instrument. Now we're going to go in and see 
just what's going on here. Also at this time, we had self-contained breathing apparatus with a tank on the back, and the, uh, but we weren't using it yet. Didn't have the mask on. When we went back out, the fire chief radioed the headquarters here in town and saying, we got our radiation alarm going off. We can't find anybody there. 